Hello, and welcome to Sean White's Solar and Energy Storage Podcast. In this episode, we're going to talk about virtual power plants. Sometimes you see that as a VPP. Virtual power plant is the aggregation of many small energy storage systems together to end up with the energy storage capacity of a large utility scale energy storage facility. All of these small energy storage systems working together in harmony with each other can provide many benefits to the grid and to the customers. On with the show. Okay, folks, this time we're going to look at a VPP. That stands for Virtual Power Plants. And this is a really cool concept. It's taking a bunch of distributed resources and combining them into being one power plant. So, for instance, you have a whole bunch of energy storage systems on houses all throughout a big city. And you can coordinate them with all different kinds of things on the grid. And you can use that as a power plant, just like you could with a large battery. And so these virtual power plants are more popular in places where there's a greater concentration of solar and that's increasing like crazy all the time. It's also in places where there's more progressive policies, say for instance, where they want to be carbon neutral, places like Germany and places where there's a ton of sunlight and a ton of solar, such as in Australia, really popular place to have a lot of solar. And so then they need a lot of batteries. And if you put the batteries in all different places on the grid, that works better. And one of these places to put the batteries is at the house, typically also coupled with a solar system. So I don't know of anybody that gets their electricity prices at their house changed when it's sunny or windy, things like that. Sometimes we do have seasonal electric rates, time of use electric rates, demand charges. But when your utility is buying power, it could change. And so they just incorporate those changes into their rate schedule and they give you an even number for your electricity prices. Your bill is confusing enough. Wouldn't it be crazy confusing if your electricity rate changed with the weather? So you can have energy exchanges working for you using their artificial intelligence, buying low, selling high, and perhaps just like investing in a mutual fund, they can even out your charges and they can control the battery on your house and when it's going to suck power, when it's going to push power, and also perhaps your loads, when they're going to turn off or slow down, perhaps even for 30 second intervals, just to help the grid out. Some of the factors could even have to do with you're on your way home, and as soon as you get there, you're going to start wanting to turn things on, and are they going to cool it off while everybody's commuting? So when you get home, it's already cool because when people arrive home, the energy is more expensive. Lots of different factors here. So perhaps your car or your phone would be communicating with your house, telling you when to cool it off. It might know which rooms you like to go to when you first get home. You could probably input things. There's just a lot that's going on in the future. Can't you tell? I would just recommend going to their website and taking a look at this virtual power plant. Perhaps Next Craftwork is the most mature virtual power plant provider out there, but I'm sure that could be argued. And so some of their definitions of a virtual power plant would be assets being aggregated, forecast, optimized, and traded like a single power plant. So if you have a coal plant out there, you're selling to different utilities on the grid. It gets really complicated and the grid needs something bad. The price will go up. Everybody turns something on, the price goes up. And so with your virtual power plant and a whole bunch of energy storage systems at different people's houses, you can make some money. Some of the different assets that we're looking at here would be, of course, solar, wind, hydropower, biomass, energy storage systems, and flexible power consumers. So when we talk about flexible power consumers, we're talking about loads such as air conditioning. Sometimes it's electric heating, could be electric vehicle charging. And so when turning off loads strategically that are not crucial, it's called demand response and sometimes called demand side management. So let's just explain a little bit about blockchain technology. People mostly know that as the way that Bitcoin works or cryptocurrencies. And so it's a distributed ledger, which means that nobody controls it. And it's so encrypted that nobody has ever figured out a password. They say if you had the fastest computer in the world, it would take 1 billion years to crack the code of just one wallet. We call it a wallet, but it's just a code that shows where you are putting your money. So I have some Bitcoin and I could give everybody my wallet address and everybody could send it money and nobody could crack that code. And I have the code also that I don't give to anyone unless I'm trying to sell it. So we can also use that technology for energy. And that way we don't have to trust 
any third party. So when you send money with a bank, you have to trust the bank. So the same can go with selling energy. It's just kind of a neat way that's very inexpensive that we can trade energy. Perhaps this is the future. Okay, now we're talking about a 2018 article with Tesla installing power walls on 50,000 houses to create the world's largest virtual power plant. So let's just say the usable energy in a power wall is rounded off to 10 kilowatt hours. Just for math's sake, we're saying 10 kilowatt hours. So we can take 10,000 for 10 kilowatt hours times 50,000 for the number of power walls that are out there. And that's just assuming one power wall per house. Maybe it's even more than that. But let's look at that number. That's kind of huge. 10,000 times 50,000 is 500 megawatt hours. So if this was in one plant, that would be the biggest energy storage system in the world by far. However, when I say by far, that could change because in this industry, we see things move at a logarithmic pace. We see them change by orders of magnitude. So it's just like moving the decimal. So this would be 500 megawatt hours or 0.5 gigawatt hours. That's huge. And that was just my estimate. A power wall is actually a little bit more than 10 kilowatt hours, but I said the usable because you're not going to probably fully charge it or fully discharge it because that would reduce the life of your battery. Isn't the future beautiful? Now, virtual power plants are not just for the different parts of the world because there are some solutions that are being worked on in the United States right now at the national grid customers in New England. So that would be Massachusetts, Connecticut, and Rhode Island. And this isn't just for power walls, but I just got this information for power walls. We're going to look at different companies too. And they're calling it connected solutions. You could do a Google and see where they are. And you can earn money this way from installing your battery. By the way, just I thought I'd mention because a lot of you might be in California, there are different incentives for energy storage in California too for rebates for installing batteries that are pretty good. One of the things though to be aware of is if you are using your battery to help the grid, the power might go down and your battery might be empty because you just used it to help the grid. So there's different ways to control the settings of that. Also some people that are in California because of all the wildfires have these things called public safety shutoffs and they give you a warning when you might be seeing a public safety shutoff coming up so you can set it so you don't have an empty battery when the public safety shutoff comes around. Just a little information on that that virtual power plant program it comes off the solar edge website it just talks about how much money you can get for having a battery that helps the grid remember though when you cycle your battery down that's more cycles that's getting closer to the end of your warranty and a battery is not 100 percent efficient a lot of the lithium battery solutions could be perhaps 90 percent efficient which is way better than lead acid which is about 70 percent efficient but still your round trip efficiency if it's 90 percent efficient that means you're losing 10 percent of your power so you want to make sure that you get paid enough to compensate for that and the price of your battery over your battery's life cycle. This is also telling you what times a day they might be discharging your battery, and this will last for five years. However, they could renew it. And hey, it's nice to be part of the community. Sunrun might be the largest residential solar installer in the United States, and they're working on replacing an Oakland power plant with a virtual power plant. So they're installing batteries all over Oakland to compensate for shutting down a power plant, which runs off of jet fuel, which is pretty much kerosene, sort of like diesel. So isn't that cool? Don't you just want to move to Oakland so you can participate? Oakland's a really cool place, by the way. That's where I was born. So one of the partners with this solution is STEM. And so they're using artificial intelligence, making a virtual power plant. We have wind, we have solar, we have batteries, we have electric cars. They're all talking to each other. They're all working together. Life is beautiful. So I hope you enjoyed virtual power plants. Look for them in the future. And remember the acronym VPP, virtual power plants. And that does not just include the battery, it can include a whole bunch of energy resources on the grid in a super smart brain, which is called artificial intelligence. So what do you know? You just learned about virtual power plants. To find out more about energy storage, PV, and everything else under the sun, go to solarsean.com. Over and out.